Hi everyone and hello Europe, how you're doing this evening guys? So just a few minutes ago the Eurovision semi-finals allocation draw has come to an end and we can finally see which countries are participating in which semi-final, plus also the big six. This ceremony was kind of weird and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the first time where a country is already selected before the ceremony even begins and this country is Israel. Israel asked the Eurovision producers if they can be put on the second semi-final because on that day there is this memorial day for Israel so I think it will match up the song I don't really know and I have no idea. I didn't know this was a possible thing before today but actually it is. If I do agree with this decision or not, it's not that important now because first of all I want to confront myself with other Eurovision fans, maybe this was a rule that I didn't know existed, maybe this thing actually happened in the past, I don't really know. But this was my first time seeing something like this, so let's just accept it. They know what they do, the producers know perfectly what are they doing with this show, so I'm trusting them 100%. Before we start with this reaction and analysis, I'm gonna please you to give me a like and subscribe to my channel, and you can also hit the notification bell if you don't wanna miss any of my Eurovision content. So now, let's begin. So, on the first semi-final, we have Croatia, Cyprus, Ireland, Lithuania, Poland, Serbia, and Ukraine. This is the first half. And then we have Australia, Azerbaijan, Finland, Iceland, Luxembourg, Moldova, Portugal and Slovenia closing with the second half. Going, going in order, Croatia in the first half, <laughs> I don't know. It depends on who wins Dora, but Croatia performing in the first half, it's a bit risky, let's be honest. Then we have Cyprus. Cyprus should do well. It doesn't matter if it's in the first half or second half. I truly believe they did a great job with Celia, so we'll have a huge surprise. And then we have Ireland. This was very, very unexpected to see Bambi performing on the first semi-final, first half of the show. Can it be dangerous for Ireland? I don't know. I don't really know. Because this song is very tricky, guys. I can't I can't predict it. Even if it was in the second semi-final, it was tricky to me. But in the first half, oh my gosh. Unless they close the first or second half, I don't know what's going on with Ireland. And then we have Lithuania. I don't know. Lithuania is doing well in these recent years. But it's kind of an underdog, guys. Lithuania is right in the middle of doing good and bad at the Eurovision. And this year it went well, but here seeing Lithuania stuck with Croatia, Cyprus, Serbia and Ukraine in the first half, I don't really know what to think. I don't know. And then we have Poland. I think Poland is the one that should be worried more in the first half, to be honest. Yeah. We got Serbia as well in the first half. Serbia will do good. I'm confident. No matter who wins Pesma, they will deliver quality 100%. And I bet Serbia will do good. And then we have Ukraine. Another country that is always playing and will take some spots in the first half as well. Ukraine is one to be worried about. For real. Now let's move on to the second half. Australia. Australia is not the best country in Eurovision, let's be real. They are very liked by the juries, but not that much from the public. Exceptions are some atypical cases, actually. But Australia can do good in this half. Because this half is very strong, guys. We have Australia, Azerbaijan, Finland, Moldova, Slovenia. Now we got Tali from Luxembourg, which is another great song. We're waiting for Iceland, we're waiting for Moldova, which is kind of weak this year. This year's national selection of Moldova is not the best we've seen so far. And then we have the sleepy underdog Portugal. <laughs> okay. I think Australia could do good. Could do very well if they send something good. But they can also struggle. Azerbaijan has a closed selection this year. I saw some tweets about the participants of Azerbaijan. 
and I don't really know what to expect because until last year I was sure Azerbaijan was coming all the time to win or at least trying to win but after last year I feel like Azerbaijan is kind of chilling right now I don't really know what to expect from Azerbaijan but now we got Finland which I will say they are qualifying no matter what Finland will qualify because UMK has some great songs so far I still need to react to some of those but for the ones that I've seen Finland is qualifying and now we got Iceland Iceland should be in trouble because I haven't heard the songs of their national selection but Iceland is not one of the strongest countries in those recent years unless we talk about 2020 and 2021 they were really really strong but they are kind of chilling Iceland is always chilling it's an underdog like the other ones and being stuck between Australia, Azerbaijan, Finland and Slovenia it's a danger for them Luxembourg is kind of tricky but I think Luxembourg will do well the song is good in the second half it's great they can perform 10th, 14th or also closing the show they will do well I'm kind of confident and Moldova if I didn't saw the Moldova national final I would have said that Moldova is kind of okay, but Moldova is kind of weak this year, guys. It's true that Moldova has this weird national selection and then they come a Eurovision and slay, but this year's songs, I don't know. Unless it's Natalia Barbu, Moldova will struggle to qualify to me. And Portugal. I haven't heard the Portuguese selection this year, but even if I did, all the Portuguese songs, no offense, are very chill, so it's kind of hard to predict if they will do well or not. But Portugal is a very solid country in Eurovision, so I bet they will do well. They can actually. And we got Slovenia with Raven. This is very nice because I was worried about Raven. Performing in the first half, my gadget song forgot. Because performing in the first half with that song might be a danger, people might forget about the performance and the song, but in the second half, it's a very nice position. Unless she gets stuck between some of those big countries. I'm worried about this actually, yeah. And talking about who will vote from a big six, in the first semi-final we have Sweden, United Kingdom and Germany as well. Talking about neighbor countries, Poland and Ukraine might support each other, Slovenia and Croatia will support each other, but most important, Ireland, Iceland, Finland, they will support each other as well. Are there any leftovers? It's funny, but I think Portugal is one of the countries that doesn't have any neighbor countries this semi-final. And not either any country that supports that much Portugal with a voting pattern. So Portugal, you might be expensive this year. And this is a trickiest one actually, because in the second semi-final we see performing Albania, Armenia, Austria. And this is not the first time these three countries that starts with an A and end with an A perform together. We've seen these three countries performing together in 2021, if I'm not wrong. And it was kind of a mess. Then we got Czechia, Denmark, Greece, Malta and Swiss closing with the first half. And talking about second half, Belgium, Estonia, Georgia, Israel, Latvia, Netherlands, Norway and San Marino. Alright. This is where everything gets interesting for us because if you see this at first, this semi-final doesn't look that strong. But we got some precious gems inside of this that you can't even imagine. So Albania in the first half with Armenia and Austria. I can say they did them so badly. I'm so sorry for these three countries, even for my dear Armenians. These three countries are in danger. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is funny, but actually there is nothing to be worried about because this semi-final is very unpredictable. Then we got Czechia with Aiko. 
Oh my gosh. We're starting with Zamran Dore. Then we got We Were Rave. Armenia is kinda known. And then we got Aiko. And then we have Denmark. Another. I, will, I wouldn't say Denmark is an underdog. Denmark is just Lippy, a Eurovision. I never hated any of the Danish songs, but I never loved one. I'm, I'm totally honest. Denmark is that country that delivers a nice song, but they will never put the effort to win a contest. And 2013 wasn't a typical case. That song was nice, nothing too big, nothing too expensive, nothing too explosive, but they won our hearts. And that's their pattern. Denmark has always nice songs, but sleepy. And there is Greece. This is spicy. They just divided again Cyprus and Greece, which is okay. And I don't know. Greece is a solid country as well at Eurovision. But this year, in the first half, it really depends on the song. And following up, we got Malta. Now it's very tricky for Malta because if Banana wins Mask 24, they might qualify. But if Erba wins Mask 24, they might be in danger because a girl group song in the first half, I think they might be forgotten. I'm worried. Even though I'm rooting more for Erba than Banana, they might be forgotten. But we also have other participants, so we don't know. And there is Swiss, one of the most unpredictable countries at Eurovision. You can never know what they will deliver at Eurovision, and I can't say if that's good or not, but seeing how people are not voting that much for Swiss on the semi-finals and even at the grand final, it's a problem. It's a problem. If the first half seems a mess, let's take a look at the second half. We got Belgium starting up. Belgium is a solid country, I would say, of Eurovision, at least in those recent years. And I'm not worried. Belgium in the second half is kinda okay. Then we got Estonia. I don't really know what Estonia will send to Eurovision. Because the only one song that I reacted, which was Cecilia with FOMO, got eliminated. So I don't really have an idea what they will do. Estonia is kind of a solid country, but not always. They are always kind of sleepy sometimes. And I guess the second half is okay, unless they get stuck between countries like Israel, Norway, Netherlands. And then we got Georgia. Listen, I would have said Georgia is a very interesting but weak country at Eurovision. But this year they will send Nutza. She's a legend. And her vocals are something that you can't hear from everyone. And I guess Georgia is qualifying after seven years. I hope at least. I really hope. And we got Israel following up. I don't know if I should be political or not in this case, but my opinion is that maybe a lot of people won't vote for Israel anyways. But they said and asked to be put in this semi-final because there is a Memorial Day. And I saw somewhere as well that they are sending a Jewish song. So, are they trying to win our hearts? I don't know. Because talking about Israel as a country, they are iconic in those years. Actually, they've always been iconic when it comes to Eurovision. They send masterpiece after masterpiece in those six, seven years, I can't even remember. And second half for Israel would have been very easy to qualify. But if there is a war going on, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. This is a very delicate argument, so I don't really want to talk about it because I should be very careful about what I say. I don't want to be rude, offensive. My political opinions aren't that important when it comes to Eurovision because Eurovision is where you can unite and reunite. It's where you can start again. And if you put politicals into a competition, even though a big war, which I know is going on, I believe it's not the right place 
It's like going to argue into a toy shop about deforestation, you know what I mean? There are places where to discuss something and there are places where you shouldn't, that's my opinion. But follow it up, there is Latvia. They... I don't know. I even forgot if Latvia has a national selection this year or not, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but listen, I would have preferred to see Latvia in the first half, and this is very atypical. But in the second half, there are countries even better than Latvia somehow, which are Belgium, Estonia, Norway, Netherlands. In the first half, it would have been better because Latvia could have shined a bit more, but it still depends on the song. And we got Netherlands, an underdog. You can say what they will do at Eurovision. They might come with a chill song, but they might come to slay with a nice vocalist. So I guess Netherlands in the second half is doing so well. Same thing for Norway. Norway is qualifying. You can take the qualifying ticket from Norway in the second half. We might have discussed about that if Norway was participating in the first half, but in the second half they are just chilling, you know. And then we got San Marino. Listen, San Marino is my favorite country in Eurovision because they are like these little puppies that you just want to cuddle, but they are so weak and will scream right when you touch them. And San Marino is this country of Eurovision. They will never do well. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but San Marino will never qualify unless they are lucky. But listen, there are a few exceptions where San Marino had delivered some good songs, like Chris Alide. Adrenalina was a nice song, very forgettable, but it was nice. Say Nana Na was iconic. And then they come with... What's their name? Last year's group, I can't remember. Uh, the Italians, Red Hot Chili Peppers. San Marino in the second half is kinda lucky. Unless they are 12th, 13th, 14th or 15th. If they come right after the short break, it's fine. If they are on the second break, it's perfect. If they are closing, they might have a chance like what happened with Serhat. So we'll see. And in this semi-final, we see Spain, Italy and France voting. This is curious because if we see the voting pattern of these countries, there is a mix that you can't expect. France might vote for Estonia, Netherlands, Armenia, Austria. Spain might vote for San Marino, Malta, Greece, also maybe Belgium. I don't know, I'm not sure. Then we got Armenia voting for Georgia and Greece and Malta, that's for sure. We got Czechia voting for Belgium and Estonia. We got Norway being covered up from the Swiss and the Netherlands and the Denmark as well. Also Latvia and Estonia are together. Maybe the leftovers here are Albania and Switzerland. I know that San Marino often votes for Swiss and Albania, but you can't know. You can't predict this. It's very weird. In this semi-final, exception made for Norway, I'm not sure about anyone. For real. Everyone can qualify and also be left out. So, <laughs> this is tricky, guys. I'm loving this and I'm here for this. Well, guys, this is my reaction and my analysis. This is very personal, so don't get these words for real ones. It's very personal. I'm basing my opinions on the recent voting patterns of these countries and also the recent years of each country's performance. And I don't know. I'm just worried for Aiko. Because Albania might sneak through. They got a huge diaspora. They got a nice vocalist. But Czechia, oh my gosh. First half, I don't know. See you in the next reaction.